Lord, I'm going to jump right into the word. We got some people waiting here. So I'll just put this on there later. Okay. Um, I asked the Lord for a word. And the first thing that I heard him say is, incline your ear. Now, I know this is, this is a scripture that, you know, I've heard this. <laughs> you know, I've heard this in various scriptures. It's in several places in the Bible to incline our ear. But the scripture that he gave me as the um, basis for this part of the prophetic word for December, incline your ear, is Isaiah 55, 3. He says, listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. You guys, take this, take notes for these scriptures because I, I really feel like after I release this word, this is one of those words that you need to write a couple of pointers down and write the scriptures down so you can chew on them and really dig into this word so that it'll mean more. Hey, Angela, um, this is Isaiah 55, 3. Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and climb your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. So there's things that happen as we incline our ear, which is like putting our ear up to the heart of God and saying, you know, speak, Lord, I'm listening. I'm not just hearing what you're saying. I'm listening to what you are saying. He says, if you listen to me, you will eat what is good and delight in the richest affair, affairs, which is food. Um, he wants to fill us up with good things. He wants to give us good things to eat, good things to chew on, good things to uh, take in and, and have to enjoy, things pertaining to life. Because then he says, give ear, incline to my ear, come to me, listen that you may live. So in order to even have have that abundant life that God has for us and all the things that he has in store. We first, we need to hear from him. We need to hear from God. We, the Lord is saying in the month of December, he really wants his people to take this time to reflect and to listen to him. And to, in order to do that, you have to clear out some of the other voices. You know, you might need to do, uh, a fast from TV or a fast from, you know, idle chatter, whatever it is that's taking your time that, that is not helping develop your listening ear. In the month of December over this, this time of Advent coming up to Christmas, I challenge you to spend time saying, okay, I heard, I heard you, Lord, you're telling me to listen. You have things you want to speak to me. Because if you listen to my word for 5780 and 2020, uh, the year of pay is the year of the mouth. And what it is that we, let's go to Proverbs 22 and I'll say why it's so important and um, how this coincides with the year of the mouth and speaking forth what we want to see manifested. Why it's so important that we hear from the Lord because when we hear what God is saying, then we know what to speak then we know exactly what it is that we need to say to see it come to pass. So this is going to bring some conviction to come up higher because it doesn't matter how well we hear from the Lord now, there are still things we can still grow. There might still be a stronghold in one area of our lives or one area where we need to hear from God and we're not hearing from Him. And you know, there's instruction in the word of God and instruction when we are in that intimate place where we can really incline our ear to what he's saying. And um, so this is the, another verse, Proverbs 22, 17 and 19. This is a three-part prophetic word and it, um, it builds on each other. So he says, pay attention, listen or incline your ear to the sayings of the wise um, and some versions say to, uh, to the law, he, he says down here. To, no, here's what it is. I'm sorry. God help me. Pay attention to the sayings of the wise. Apply your heart and mind to my knowledge. Some versions say uh, to my law instead of to my knowledge. For it is pleasing when you keep them in your heart. When you get the knowledge of God, when you get the word of God, when you are listening, when you are climbing your ear to the sayings of the wise and applying your heart, that means that you are actively engaging in what you're hearing. Because I think sometimes we are so blessed. 
we get so much word. We can listen to so many different sermons and stuff. And I don't think that it is the quantity always, although it's wonderful to keep filling, 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 filling. But the Lord wants you to zone in to what he is speaking to you this month. And it might not be as many voices or as many, you know, different meetings or what have you, but you got to really go where the Lord is saying, I've got a word specifically for you. Because once you get a word delivered and you know it's for you, if you just go on to the next word and the next word and the next word and the next word that aren't necessarily for you in that season, you don't have time to really incline your ear and incline your heart and meditate on what is being said and get the full benefit of hearing from God. And so he's saying, I really want you to do that this month. Um, for, this is why, for it will be pleasing when you keep them in your heart and have all of them ready on your lips. Okay. God wants to speak to us. So when we hear it, then we, we listen, we incline our heart, we meditate on it. And then it's there available for us to speak. And it says, and have all of them ready on your lips so that you so that your trust may be in the Lord. Because when you've heard from God, you've meditated on it, you've got it in your heart, and then at the right time you speak it forth, your trust is in the Lord and it comes to pass. Your trust is in the Lord and it comes to pass. He says, um, so that your trust may be in the Lord. I instruct you today. Yes, you. I love that. He's like, yes, you. This is for you. This is for me. This word is for us. So please go over that that Proverbs, because it's such a meaty word. There is uh, things, it's going to be pleasing, delightful. This is what we've seen in Isaiah and Proverbs both. When we incline our ear, so many people are afraid. They're running afraid. They don't want to listen. They don't want to incline their ear because they're, they're scared of what they're going to hear, or they're fearful of what they're going to hear because they are not fully convinced of the love of God for them, of the goodness of God's plan for their life. And when you listen and you hear what he has to say, what his plan is, then you have a responsibility to act on it more so than if you didn't ever hear it. And people know this. And so they avoid really inclining their ear to God because out of fear, but it's, 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 um, blocking your own progress and it's, uh, blocking the, the delight it's blocking the pleasing things and uh, being able to trust in God. Um, so this is not a word for somebody else. It's for each one of us. Each one of us can come up higher in this. Um, there, God reminded me of two, basically two parables um, that he wanted me to give to help you guys to remember the seriousness of this. Um, and, and without using anybody's name, it's nobody that you guys know or anything, but, um, there's two people that he brought to mind that, that prophetically and through the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, I have recognized that, um, they've had their hearing, their physical hearing affected by ignoring the, the voice of the Lord, by refusing to listen to the Lord. And, you know, you can be, uh, people can compartmentalize. They can be listening to the Lord in these three areas, but this area they have like a stronghold or they're holding out or they're not obeying God or there's some idolatry there and they refuse to hear God. And this one lady I know who's a dear Christian and serves the Lord in many ways, teaches Sunday school, um, everything. Like she, you wouldn't know that there's any, any rebellion there, but there's an area, a stronghold, an area of her life where she doesn't um, listen to the Lord because there's idolatry there. She's putting something before the Lord. There's fear there and maybe some rejection issues. But whatever it is, year after year has gone by and there hasn't been change in that area. There hasn't been breakthrough in that area. And, and she's going deaf. And the Lord had given me a word of knowledge. And I mean, I gave it to her. I spoke it to her that your ears will begin to hear. You know, sometimes you pray for somebody's healing and it's always God's will to heal. It's always God's will to heal. But there can be something in us that's blocking the healing, refusing the healing, refusing the healing. And um, sometimes it can be a spiritual matter. You know, sometimes it's just you can't receive the healing from God because you refuse to receive it. And in that case, I think that's happening. And, and somebody else, it's the same situation. There's idolatry involved. There's 
fear involved and there's rejection involved. And so be, a, be on the lookout for those things blocking you from listening, from inclining your ear in certain areas. Uh, this other person has, you know, started having pressure, ear infection, couldn't hear. And as I prayed for her, the Lord gave me that word of knowledge. This is what's going on. You're not listening to what God is trying to speak to you. And so we don't want to, we, we don't want to, to, uh, to open the door for the enemy to attack our bodies and attack our lives. Um, and, and God gave me after giving me those examples, he said, tell them Proverbs 28, nine, if anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, even their prayers are detestable. This is a word of warning. You could be praying, calling out to God, praying night and day over a situation. He's saying, if you've turned a deaf ear to his instruction, or another version says, one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayers is an abomination. Even his prayers is an abomination. If God has spoken, if God has spoken truth, he has told you what is good, what, what is an instruction for something, and you turn your ear from it, even your prayers become an abomination. That's, that's scary. I don't want my prayers to be an abomination. Lord, I pray for everybody who is listening. If there's any area in our lives, God, where we are not listening, if we are not listening, it is rebellion. What do you say to your kids when they don't listen to you? You're being rebellious. What do you do to your kids when they don't listen to you? You bring discipline. And so this is, it's a, it's, it's a call to come closer and call into intimacy. And it is also a warning to some people that you got to be, um, really pressing in to hear what God has said without hearing God's expectations, God's law, God's instruction and understanding the righteous requirements of the law, your prayers become carnal. And so you're praying for what you want. You're praying for what you think about. You're praying for how you feel about things. And that is not uh, good. It's not good. We got to hear what God says and pray what he wants. Pray what he wants to see happen and pray what he has uh, shown us about ourselves, about other people, about the situation. We need to be praying. We need to be speaking what we have heard the father speak to us in the secret place. Uh, an, an example of what a detestable prayer is. It, you know, we might think in our hearts that we are praying uh, selfless prayers. We're praying for financial increase. We're praying for a financial increase. Oh Lord, increase our finances. We want to be able to help people. We want to help other people. And we can't do that now because we don't have the resources to help anybody. But if you are not helping at the level that you are, if you are not giving out of your little, the Bible says, if you are faithful over little, you won't be faithful over much. And so it, it, you could just be completely fooling yourself and actually say, saying in your prayers, you're praying to prosper so you can bless other people, but God knows your heart. You haven't listened to his instruction. You're not giving where you are. You're not sowing out of your little, you're not, you're not, uh, you know, serving out of your little, whatever it is. And, but yet you think you're praying God-centered, God-ordained prayers, and the Lord is saying that's not what you're doing at all. And we got to be careful. <laughs> we got to be careful because God isn't fooled. God is not fooled. We can fool ourselves, even in our prayers, but God is not fooled by this kind of stuff. So, um, oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, one more scripture, and then I'm going to move on uh, to the next part of the word. 2 Timothy 4, 3. For a time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. That's now. And that's probably not most of you guys, but share this on your page because there's others. And that will hit this just because it says prophetic word. But there's a time when people won't put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit, suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to miss. And this is basically what happens when people, you know, are just, just listening to prophets that release prophetic words, but don't want to hear any teaching, don't want to hear any preaching, you know, don't want to be under any good Bible. 
you know, <laughs> scripture, Bible teaching, and um, that are uh, essentially, it talks about ears here, itching ears, what their itching ears want to hear. It's to their own destruction. So uh, just be understanding what the word of God says. You know, even some prophets that are talking too much about finances, too much about riches, you know, the Bible says, those of you who seek to be rich in this life, you know, be careful, be careful. It's it's not that God doesn't call anybody into um, uh, wealth. It's not that God hates wealth. It, it, and it's not at all that I'm saying that it is ungodly to be wealthy, but you have to be careful that you're not just seeking after these things. And I talk about wealth. It's the best example when talking about false prophets and such. But um, there's other things that will speak to your flesh. And you've got to be careful. So be careful. In the first part of the word about inclining your ear to the Lord, I think the first thing that people need to be praying for, I've seen uh, just this week another um, couple of people come out against a false prophet that I, I knew was a false prophet. I didn't feel led to make a video about it. But there's that have thousands of followers. So you need to first say, Lord, is there anybody I'm listening to, whether it's online or a friend of mine who I think is wise, <laughs> you know, is there anybody I'm listening to that is not giving me your clear instruction and, 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 and cut those voices out this month because God has something to say and he really, really, really is lining you up for um, places of honor in 2020. And I'm going to talk about that. So let's go to 1 Samuel 3. Um, you guys studied Samuel at all? So Samuel um, was a promised child to a woman who was childless. And she had asked the Lord for a child. And he gave her one. And, and she dedicated him to the Lord. And brought him to the temple after she had weaned him. Samuel. And he was raised there in the temple by Eli. Um and so let's let's look at 1 Samuel 3, 7 through 11. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went into Eli and said, Here I am, you call me. So he's laying in bed. He's a kid and he hears Samuel, Samuel. He thinks it's Eli, the priest. And he goes in and he's like, what? And he's like, I didn't say anything. It's about the third time. The priest caught a hold of it and is like, hold on, God's talking to you. Next time he says something, say, you know, speak, Lord, I'm listening. And so this is a prophetic, this is a rhema word for you. You might know that you've been, you've been being called by God. You know God has been calling you, but you might be going to somebody else. You know, you know you're hearing something from God, but you're going to somebody else. And, and I'm saying you're here for a word and the Lord is saying to you, go back. And the next time you hear uh, your name being called, say, speak, Lord, I am listening. Because God is going to speak to you on your bed this month if you will cut out um, the distractive voices, if you will zone in and incline your ear, and you say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. I know God's calling me into something greater. I know God has spoken some things to me. I've taken some steps of faith. I'm not seeing the fullness of it. I don't know what to do next. I don't know you know, what in this relationship I need to do different or, or how I need to, you know, some new strategy. But I know God's speaking to me and I'm saying, Lord, I need to hear from you. And he's going to speak to you personally because sometimes you can hear something um, out of the word or a teacher. But when you hear it from God and you know it is the voice of God speaking to you, then you meditate it on your heart and you speak it forth and the change happens. You know, sometimes... It's something about yourself that the Lord is saying, I'm set, I've set you free from this. A lot of times you need to hear from God. You've been set free. I have set you free from this. You don't need to struggle in this any longer. You are free from this thing that has been attached to you. You are free to walk free from this. Or, or you know, I, I think to hear it from God, you have the confidence to speak it forth in faith. Um, so the Lord is saying in this season, this Advent season, it's a time to pull away, to listen, to hear, and to prepare. Grow up into the next level of hearing God speak 
by doing exactly what he asks when he speaks without fear and then his voice becomes louder and louder and louder each time you say yes lord and do what he's told you to do even when it doesn't make sense the next time he speaks to you it's a little bit clearer a lot of people are trying to enter in to that place where they hear from god but they haven't obeyed the last thing that he told them to do and so you got to go back and do the last thing he told you to do and then he'll give you the next instruction do it without fear even if it means pronouncing the word of god and getting rejected reviled or ridiculed even if it means that you are setting yourself up to to be rejected reviled or ridiculed you have got to allow yourself to be vulnerable so when god speaks you do what he asks you to do and you are in a vulnerable position where you're trusting in his word you're stepping out on his word when you hear from him and he is faithful and he'll come through and i love this this is for you guys this is for me if you go down to verse 19 um oh, verse 11 so then he uh the lord came and stood there calling as at the other time samuel samuel then samuel said speak for your servant is listening and the lord said to samuel see I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. There's that ears again. He mentions the ears so many times because he has created us to listen and to hear. And so he's going to do a major th thing through Samuel. And then if you go to verse 19, the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. And he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. This is is God's desire for each it's it's his desire for each and every one of us for 2020. Can you imagine none of the words that we speak will fall to the ground? You people of faith who have spoken things and not seen them come to pass or not seen them come to pass when you had believed that you had heard from the Lord, can you understand that God's calling us into the deep deep places in him that we hear him so clearly and we've inclined our ear and we've meditated on what he said and we've stored it up in our heart and we speak it exactly when he says to speak it how he says to speak it and none of it falls to the ground meaning it all came to pass everything samuel said would come to pass that's powerful i want that i want that i want that i want that and i'm inclining my ear to the lord and I'm praying that you guys do this too because this is exciting. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. If you were saying, I don't hear from God through impressions. I don't hear from God like some of the prophetic ways that I hear other people hear him. You got his word and you can hear if you can read. Because that's how he spoke to Samuel is through his word, through his word, get in his word. He's going to, he's going to make it alive to you and there will be rhema words. It'll be scripture you've seen 10 times before, but this month it's going to jump off the page and it's going to be a promise for you and you're going to be able to chew on it and delight in it. And it's going to be a delight. It's going to be like good food for you because the word of God is food. It's the bread of life and you are going to chew on it. And you are going to chew on it. And then at the right time, you're going to speak out what it is that you've stored up in your heart that he has promised you. And it will come to pass exactly the way that you say it. It won't fall to the ground. It won't return void. So this is what we're doing to press in this month. Um, 2020 will be a year for many that have inclined to hear the word of the Lord to be recognized. He says, honor will be bestowed by those that recognize you as someone that has been with the Lord. <sighs> People are going to recognize you as somebody who has been with the Lord, who has heard from the Lord. You know, when Jesus preached, they said, where did this man get this power? He's speaking it with such authority. There's a new confidence that comes to you. When you're hearing from the Lord and you know you're hearing from the Lord. You're not thinking you might be. You wish you were. You kind of are. When you know God is speaking with you in the secret place. When you know that he's given you specific instructions. When you know that you lay there completely bare before him and let him 
rip out the wounded places and, 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 and replace them with fresh, new, fleshy heart instead of a stone, when you know that you've heard God speak and that you have had the courage to say, you know, you're right, I'm, I am needing help in this area, and you, you stand in faith that God is able to heal you and that you are healed by the stripes of the Lamb, you take that communion and you just speak forth the word that he spoke to you. I am healed. I am whole. I am strong. I am, you know, what God says I am. I've heard what he has said. I've read what he said about me. I've read about my value. I've read about my worth. And I meditate. I'm inclining my ear to that. Not anything else that I hear. Not even my own behavior. I am pushing all that to the side. And I am going to be transformed by this word that is spoken to me and I'm going to speak forth the truth about who I am, what I'm called to do, what he's going to do through me, and it's not going to fall to the ground. Okay. Those of you who might have been or might be growing weary and well-doing, I'm going to speak kind of a little bit into 2020. And even this month, I'm believing that this month, it, and it's a month of gifts. It's a month of giving, a month of remembering God coming to earth and what he's done for us and just the humility and the love and, the, and his grand scheme plan. It's just a wonderful month. It's a wonderful season to remember him, to remember he's coming back, to remember he has good things in store for the upright. I want you um, to read the book of Malachi. It's like a, a scriptural um, <laughs> a, um, assignment. Uh, you know, maybe you don't read the Old Testament m much, but read Malachi. And there's a couple of things, um, and this is how I'm closing it out, that he details in Malachi about Israel and their disobedience. And these are some of the things that you might need to hear from the Lord about that might be going on with you that could block all that he's wanting to do. Um, he's talking about defective sacrifices. You know, a lot of times you feel like you are at the end of the rope. You've given, 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 and the Lord says, I didn't ask for any of that. I ask you to obey me. And you just made all these sacrifices that I didn't even ask from you. No wonder you're worn out and you're ready to give up. So these are detestable sacrifices. When you have given God less than your uh, best, which is obedience. He says, I desire obedience, not sacrifice. A teaching error. And I think that can go in with a, a following er uh, teachers that are foolish, that are teaching error. Being unfaithful to a spouse. This is something... Um, and complaining that it's futile to serve the Lord. So he's talking about these things and, and pronouncing strict judgment on people who do these things. Please do not be weary. God, I pray right now that there just be a, a breaker anointing of the weariness, of the discouragement, of the, um, the demonic attacks against people's emotions and brains. It says this isn't going to work out. I know I listen to God. I, I'm quite sure I listen to God in this, but it's not turning out the way that I thought it would. And you become start to become weary. Be careful because then you start to complain. And this honor that God is bringing on his people, he's bringing out the book of remembrance. And this is Malachi talks about the book of remembrance. God doesn't need to write things down, but he does. <laughs> he writes down everything that we have done in faithfulness, all of our obedience, all of our praise, all of our worship, all of our um, giving. God's writing it down. And a lot of times that stuff can get backed up. I know that has happened with financial gifts for people. And I really think God has a reason for letting that stuff back up because he's getting our, our hearts purified that we are not just giving to get. We're not just giving to get. Yes, we can give with great expectation that we will reap what we sow. But there's a line where we don't want to just get, I'm giving to this organization. I'm tithing because I need money back. Yes, we tithe expecting like a farmer to get a crop. But we also tithe and give and serve because that's pleasing to the Lord. And we want to please God. And so sometimes he will have a long stretch of time period. And that's when the, the gonk comes up, when it doesn't happen, when we think, well, I've done this for a while and they're not giving back. And that, you know, I've been honoring them and they still don't appreciate me. And, you know, all the different ways that we sow and we obey and we start off doing it for the glory of God or we think we do. And then it becomes apparent when we don't see the as results immediately 
what we got up inside of us. Jealousy is birth. I've experienced this. I've experienced this in different areas, you know, ministry, like, you know, uh, you have to be careful, but also pay attention because if that jealousy comes up, if the weariness and, you know, giving up attitude and the sour attitude, all that stuff comes up, that stuff that the Lord's wanting to cleanse us from because he is bringing us into a place of honor and he needs us to be honorable and to have pure hearts and, and, and he's creating that in us, pure heart. So, actually, the book of remembrance is in several places. It's Exodus 32, 32, um, Psalm 56, 8, um, Daniel 7, 10, and 12, 1, and Revelations 13, 8, Revelations 20, 15. So, the book of remembrance is in the Bible a lot. It's there. He's writing this stuff down. And, and the Lord is saying, this month, and, and, and especially all through 2020, God is going to pull that book out. And you are going to get some recompense. You are going to see the Lord do honorable things for you and honor you among people and pull you out of situations like Noah. You don't have to be scared about the end times and all that's going on because God, if he can destroy and flood the entire earth and save one family out of it, he can take care of us. We're a big bunch. You know, no matter what is going on in society, we will eat. He will take care of his children. We will be clothed. He's a good God, you know? And so no matter what is going on in your family and your neighborhood and the world, God is going to honor those who have honored him. He's going to take care of us. You can look at one more example is Mordecai in the book of Esther. Uh, the king actually kept what is similar to what God keeps, a book of remembrance. Every time somebody would do something for the king, they would write it down. And the king couldn't sleep. Mordecai, who was Esther's uncle, and a Jew, um, Haman was wanting to kill all the Jews off, and he hated all the Jews. Esther was a Jew, but the king didn't know it. He was married to her. And, and Mordecai had uh, saved the king's life by revealing a plot against him. And the king read about that, and he said, I, you know, I want to honor this guy. I want to honor this guy. And what he had done had way been passed. And he, just read the book of Esther. I love that book. It's one of my husband's favorite books. And you know, the king honors him. He took his own enemy, the guy who was plotting his murder, and took his house, took his possessions, and 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 gave it to Mordecai, and then took the destruction that was meant against Mordecai through Haman, and, and Haman got the thing that he was wanting to do against Mordecai. We don't have to try to protect ourselves. We don't have to try to manipulate. We don't have to try to get what comes to us. We just got to stay in that secret place, hearing from the Lord, honoring the Lord, honoring the Lord, and, um, and, and, and climbing our ear to what he says. Because honor and riches are what he has in store for the upright. The scripture is true. God wants to bless our lives. He is mostly concerned about having intimate um, relationship with us. He's concerned about making us to be like Jesus. But as we walk those things out, he can release. He can release the honor for his glory, for his purposes. And because he listens to the prayers of the upright. He listens to those who listen to him, basically. He listens. He listens. Our prayers aren't detestable to him. And he delights to do us good. And he loves to turn enemy plots and enemy plans right back around on the enemy and 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 um you know just do above and beyond anything we could have ever hope ask or imagine and it is a process but there are and i i, I am not somebody who prof prophesies suddenly a lot but i hear the word suddenly in my spirit about this honor that is coming if we will listen to this word incline our ear what the lord is saying and keep walking the path that he has called us to walk. Speaking the words that he has called us to speak. There is honor coming for his purposes to be accomplished. He is bringing elevation to his people, his faithful ones. He is bringing elevation. He is bringing honor. And he is pulling out that book of remembrance. And he is going to pay you back. He is going to pay you back in a good, 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 good way. And, and some of these things are going to be very suddenly, a suddenly turnaround. I'm believing this and receiving this for myself, Lord. I, I have heard 
the word of the Lord about some things for myself as I was pressing into this fast. The Lord released this fast that I just got out. He released some things to me on a, on a dream. And so this word was very much for me too. And I have um, um, agreed to, I, I'm, I, I live very narrowly and, and very careful about what I put in my eye and ear gates. But I'm going even harder with that in this Advent season. Because I want to hear God like never before. I'm hungry to hear him like never before. So that I know exactly what to speak. To see it manifest. So that none of the words in my mouth fall to the ground. Amen. You guys share this. Invite some people. Um, a few announcements. If you are in the Herndon, Virginia area. Please join us uh, for class. The School of the Supernatural on Tuesday night. Bible study Sunday night. 7 p.m. on Sunday night. Uh, this Friday, we're having a healing um, prayer room for physical healing, mental healing. Come in and get prayed for, get prophesied over. A Saturday, uh, December the, I believe it's the 28th after Christmas, we're going to have a ladies night out. Um, uh, Shantae, I was going to actually text text you about this or tell, <laughs> tell you when I saw you next. We're going to go uh, to Mexican food and go see Little Women. Excited about that movie coming out. Good movie. Come see and, and so you, I'll put more, post more about that up. And then the online school will, will be up and running when we get back from Africa. We are still taking gifts and donations towards the African trip or, or to our general fund or our outreach. If the Lord is blessing you through this and you feel like he, this is somewhere he wants you to sow, you can go, you can hit the PayPal or go to my website. We would love your partnership if you're a regular, um, you know, actively, regularly being blessed by this ministry. Your partnership means a lot to us as we're moving forward. This is good ground. I'm a good steward of what the Lord uh, puts in my hand. I believe that God will bless you as you are blessing others and um, just kingdom blessings to you and your family. I'm praying for you guys. Share this, tag some people. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, like the page, share the page with your friend, help me get the word out. I appreciate all you guys and I'm continuing to pray for you. And I'm going to be doing some Facebook lives in the morning again. I believe that was a something that the Lord showed. I, I think that's what the Lord has shown me. I'm going to uh, see if that's what he was talking about because um, I'm trying to decipher this dream. But I'll probably be doing some Facebook lives in the morning again. As led by the Lord, so I'm excited about that. We're praying, praying, and prophesying, and teaching as the Lord leads. Love you guys.